And Loda took over as CEO, I think, just over a year and a half ago, if I'm not mistaken, just about a year and a half ago, and has really focused the company on its biosurgery products, in particular graphics. And in addition, uh, you recently partnered your cartilage repair product, Cartiform, uh, with Arthrex, and also the Bone Matrix Bio4 with Stryker. So thank you, firstly, for being here with us today. It's nice yeah. to see you. Um, so congratulations on all the success. We have seen dramatic growth in the biosurgery uh, business. I think sales in 2012 were 8 million, and they grew to something like 60 million last year. So um, I don't know, is that seven times, six or seven X uh, growth in a two-year period. So what is accounting for this growth, and is there still more to come? Yeah. So I think what is important in 2014 is that we, we really made the Osiris University, a Osiris enterprise, uh, established a commercial infrastructure, which is pretty competitive in the marketplace right now. Uh, we have about 100 sales representatives in the, in the, in the field, um, a management team on top of that, and then a, you know, a really um, good uh, reimbursement and market access team. So first, you've got to get that infrastructure in place. We did that. We only did that after we completed the large clinical study. So we did this in sequence. Uh, first, we want to know we had a good product, and then we established the commercial infrastructure, and then we went after reimbursement, and I'm really happy to announce that we are over 80% Medicare coverage um, as of today. Um, so th this, this is significant progress. Um, in terms of future growth, I think um, you know it takes a bit of time to get your sales force totally established and totally productive. I mean, and the definition of productive would be about a $1 million you know, run rate per sales rep. That's somewhat the industry standard for a good sales rep, assuming reimbursement. And so um, we are definitely um, making progress on the reimbursement side. We have our sales force in place for a you know, couple of months right now, so I expect 2015, a continued growth year for graphics. Excellent. Now, just so that everybody understands what we're talking about, graphics is an amniotic product uh, primarily for wound healing. Um, and the study that you mentioned was uh, for diabetic foot ulcers specifically. Um, so tell us a little bit about how that study has helped you with respect to reimbursement and you mentioned you have about 80% Medicare coverage. Maybe you can kind of break out sort of how the wound healing market is between private payers, Medicare, the VU. How, how should we think about that market? So, you know, graphics is a, is a, in a, is a unique product. It's, it's, to, it's quite differentiated compared to the other amniotic products because it's the only one out there that has living cells in it. You know, when you, when you take a, a placental membrane, um, there is, there is a certain immunogenic component to that. And so the easy solution is just kill all the cells and just wipe them all out, and then you, know, you don't have any immunogenic component. The other, the other solution is selective immunodepletion. And so what Osiris is, because we have been working with stem cells for the last 20 years, we know something about cell therapeutics, we know something about cell biology, we have taken the route of selective immunodepletion, which um, allowed us to bring a product to the market that, that is really... Um, uh, protects the cells as well as the three-dimensional uh, matrix structure of the placental membrane, both important for wound healing. So once we developed that product, we did a large clinical study, multi-center study in the United States, 20 centers participated in this study. Um, we announced the results a bit over a year ago. Um, very positive results, very pleased with that. And then we started the reimbursement process. As of today, um, you know, the way how the market shakes out is, um, you know, Medicare um, lives are very important patient target group because they are elderly people, diabetics, um, and that's where you have most of the DFUs. So that group, I would say, represents about 50% of the market. And, um, you know, it's very important as you embark on reimbursement to get first Medicare squared away. After Medicare, your commercial payers um, um, come online. We have made quite some progress on the commercial side as well. Um, you know, definitely, we would like to get over 100 million lives insured this year on the commercial side, besides the Medicare side. And so uh, we're making significant progress there as well. But this is going to be a work in progress throughout the rest of 2015. Um, so I would say 
today our business is um, primarily now uh, Medicare patients. I mean, of course, the VA business, the pure government business, is, is still a very important component of our business, but is not the largest component anymore. It is actually Medicare patients, mostly treated in the HOPD. That's a really important transition from just a year yes. ago, so it's good to hear that. Now, there has been a lot of talk about CMS and the final pricing rule um, that basically is including a bundling of skin substitutes, such as graphics, um, into uh, outpatient procedures, and this went into effect earlier this year, if I'm not mistaken. Walk us through the details, if you would. It's a little bit particular, so maybe keep it at a high level for us. But how has uh, OSIRIS kind of taken um, graphics to really fit within uh, these, this yeah. new bundling at CMS? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good question. I think many of our competitors um, you know, deal with the same, the same um, kind of new rule. But what it basically is is that you know, CMS issued a bundle rule, and a bundle means we're going to pay the procedure as well as the product in one price point, with one price point. This is $1,408, I believe, for the high bundle. There's also a low bundle for less sophisticated products, uh, but, but for the more advanced wound healing products, it's a high bundle of 1408 The beauty of our technology, and some of our competitors as well, is that we are able to develop different sizes of products that have different price points. And as the wound closes, um, as you put graphics on, you can use smaller and smaller sizes. And so therefore, it's a win-win situation for both the company and, and, the, um, and, and the payer, as well as the hospital, that you can use smaller sizes at smaller price points that fall under the bundle. Today, Osiris has six different sizes of graphics available. Four of them fall under the bundle. And importantly, too, I haven't really seen a change in, in um, gross margins as a result of that. So it's not, is there a risk to gross margins as a result? Or are you basically able to process the existing tissue in a similar manner such that it really shouldn't affect margins? Yeah, much? smaller sizes cost less money. Okay, good. Um, now, to go a, a little bit off course for a second. Um, you're also conducting a study in venous leg ulcers, or VLUs, and these are a little bit different than DFUs, but probably some relationship sort of between um, the issues. Is that an opportunity for OSIRIS to expand the graphics market opportunity? Yeah, I mean, there are about 2 million, 2.2 million chronic wounds out there. Um, and about half of it is VLUs, the other half is DFUs. And I think, you know, all companies combined uh, really have a very small penetration as of today. So there's a lot of growth pretty much for everybody in this marketplace um, because there's still a limited use of advanced skin substitute products in this space, maybe 10%, 15% penetration. And so by providing more evidence that the products work, we do expect to, um, to actually have way more usage of these kind of products into, um, in the marketplace compared to today. Now, we are doing it in two steps. First, we have a smaller program going on that we just is more exploratory in nature, and we'll follow that up with a large phase three quality um, multi-center randomized controlled clinical study in VLUs. Excellent. Now, one of the things I really like about Osiris is it's not just a wound healing company. It's not just a graphics company. And you guys have actually been very productive on the R&D side. And one of the uh, cool products that you've come out with is Cartiform, uh, which is a really innovative cartilage repair product. And that was recently, uh, maybe not quite a year ago, partnered with Arthrex. So tell us who Arthrex is and what is the potential for this product in their hands? So yeah, we, we you know I, I believe that you know wound care as well as sports medicine are two really sweet spots for regenerative medicine. When you have a cartilage defect or a menisci defect or you know a chronic gaping wound, you know a popping a pill will not solve the problem. And so you need different solutions for that. And and so that's really a sweet spot for regenerative medicine and therefore for osiris therapeutics. Um, you know in the sports medicine business, we developed a product called Cardiform which is a viable cartilage mesh that um, is implanted um, you know, at, the, at the site of uh, damage. And we have done 
till now we have done you know scientific characterization work we have done goat studies and we have done about 250 implants 300 implants right now uh, in in, phys in in patients and we're able to actually do some histological confirmation of the quality of the implant in patients so some physician had to go back into the patients not for cartilage reasons but for other reasons and were able to take a biopsy we just published that the first cases um, last month and we're really pleased to see that we were able to regenerate um, hyaline cartilage, not fibrocartilage, which is what you mostly have today. And so this is definitely um, a product that we believe very strongly in. It's going to address a very significant unmet medical need. Artrex is the partner of choice. It's a strategic partnership that goes much deeper than just distribution. We have very close interactions at the R&D level, regulatory level, marketing and sales level. And you know, Artex is the, you know is an absolute leader in in, in, in sports medicine. is a phenomenal company, and um, they basically, um, together with Stryker, to some extent, uh, which is the other partner we have, they basically look at the upcoming academy meeting at um, the orthopedic surgeons meeting this week in Vegas as a real launch meeting for both Cardiform and Stryker looks at it as well uh, for the launch of Bio4. Um, the benefit of, of a, a company like Artrix is that currently we use the product more as um, an open surgery, but Artrix is developing surgical techniques to use it arthroscopically, which expands the market quite a bit. There are a couple hundred thousand of these procedures a year, um, especially if you could apply the product arthroscopically and you would be able to develop a surgical technique for that, that would expand the market quite significantly. Makes a lot of sense. You mentioned Stryker and Bio4. So tell us what this product is and what this deal uh, does for Osiris. So Osiris Therapeutics developed OsteoCell in 2005 and ultimately sold this to Nuvasive in 2008. Um, you know, a little bit to our surprise, there was really no innovation happening in this space for the last five, six, seven years. So we decided to develop a product <clears throat> that gets as close as possible to a real autograph, which is still the standard of care or the golden, the golden standard. And so um, the problem with the existing products right now is, yes, they are osteoinductive. Yes, they are osteoconductive. Yes, they are osteogenic. They don't have enough growth factors in there to really be angiogenic. And so angiogenesis is, is a very important component of bone formation because you've got to start with you know, having some vessel formation first. And so we developed Bio4, which has actually beyond the three uh, osteoinductive, conductive, and osteogenic properties, also angiogenic properties. Um, was of significant interest to Stryker, and actually Stryker announced um, today, they had a press release today, that they will launch Bio4 at the upcoming Academy meeting. Great, excellent, thank you. Um, and I just want to see if there's any questions from the audience while we have Loda here. So, Loda, I, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit because I know you guys are cooking up other things too. Can you tell us about, at a very high level, where maybe some other products could be coming from Osiris or yeah. some things to look for from the future? I think what's important is that Osiris is a therapeutics company. And so we're a biotechnology company. And, and, and so there are two steps how we will further evolve the company to become a real uh, therapeutics player. First is, um, you know, graphics as a tissue regulated product today will uh, go through the BLA process. This is a voluntary action Osiris is taking. We didn't have to, but I think it's the right thing to do. Uh, has a lot of advantages, also international advantages, ex-US. And so that's the first um, you know, pillar in our strategy to move into the BLA space. Behind that, you know, our scientists are working diligently on a totally new bioengineered technology platform where we're going to combine our knowledge of cells and cell therapeutics and cell biology with scaffolds. And, and then moving towards a, a product platform that's going to have scaffolds and cells combined. You're going to stick to the wound care and stick to the sports medicine franchise, but we'll come out with products, but, and they're all going to be BLA-regulated um, products that are going to be bioengineered and ultimately you know, should be superior to some of the current wound care products and some of the current um, you know, sports medicine products uh, available. Very interesting. But that's, that's going to be about a five-year program. All right, cool. Well, I'll, I'll stick around and wait and see that. Um, just 
you know, for my own plug, I currently have an overweight rating and maybe a twenty-six or twenty-eight dollar price target on our site. Right. <laughs> so, lastly, you guys ended uh, last year with about fifty million in cash, very healthy position, and are currently profitable. So, as you kind of look to the company into twenty fifteen, into twenty sixteen, how do you balance growth and profitability? Yeah, that's. That's a difficult question. Um, you know, we are a very scientifically R&D driven company. We will invest in R&D. We'll continue to invest in R&D. Um, on the other hand, um, especially with the new bioengineer platform that's coming along. However, um, you know, we, are, we have turned the corner. This company is a, is a, is a player now with a significant revenue. Uh, we continue to grow. Um, we have also now a, a profitable company and, and we don't plan to change that unless there is a very specific high you know, potential reward kind of R&D program that might change, because I want to keep that flexibility. But ultimately, um, yeah, the company has turned the corner as a commercial enterprise. Excellent. Well, Loda, thank you very, very much to be here.